Ambassador Zeal Kasktime stepped up to the podium, looking out at the assembled council members from dozens of different species. As was tradition, the new species to the Galactic Collective was formally introduced by a peer race to vouch for their sentience and fitness to join the interstellar community. Having reached spaceflight capability only recently, humanity had passed the basic evaluations. Now came the formality of welcoming them publicly and providing an overview of their abilities and culture to guide other races in diplomatic engagements. Ambassador Zil Kasktime clicked his mandibles sharply to indicate he was ready to speak. Honored representatives, today I present on behalf of humanity for induction as a peer species. As you know, in the collective each race contributes via focus on our unique talents and instincts. The ambassador's species, the Cheltik, were known as methodical metallurgists and manufacturers. Other examples were easily visible the entitled Nol Kwai Senators valued for their economic analysis, the medial slain VA doctors with their diagnostic skills, proud warrior races like the Batrahi. The primary contribution of any new member was crucial information for the others. Zil Kasktime continued, in assessing the Terrans, my team confirms humans display typical mammal physiology and psychology. They originate from a volatile world with scarce resources and nearly destroyed themselves via warfare over ideologies before reaching the stars. Rumors rippled through the chambers. Such destructive tendencies were hardly unique but remained a concerning trait. The ambassador lifted his forelegs reassuringly. They have made efforts to curb these flaws, do not fear. Ritualized conflicts persist as cultural outlets rather than open war. More clicking now from the Mom Thak delegation in appreciation. Their species culture valued mock battles for fitness and honor. Any mammal valuing honest combat was acceptable in their eyes. So the ambassador went on, we come to their likely greatest contribution based on environment and history. My analysis predicts, honoring their volatile emotions yet proclivity for diverse cooperation, when needed, humanity's role shall be. He paused for dramatic effect before finishing. Diplomats the chamber grew quiet in consideration. Having an additional people talented at compromise could be useful for resolving the endless minor conflicts arising in the collective, and the human's direct manner of speaking held potential for navigating the touchier egos among certain hierarchy-focused species. Yes, the Council agreed, accepting humanity as valued intermediaries made good sense. Formal introductions would take place the following cycle, allowing time for each delegation present today to prepare diplomatic welcomes to these new colleagues. None doubted the Cheltik assessment. When it came to matching species psyches to community roles, their people had never been wrong. One standard year later. Impossible. There is no higher art form than Elkor tree shaping. Who are these primates to claim superiority in creative pursuits? The Efhan senator was livid at the human delegation's gift of a delicate glass statuette to his people celebrating a recent treaty. Its unique asymmetric style and utterly non-functional purpose were declared insultingly primitive. Before the furious Efhan could escalate further, the human ambassador stepped forward palms raised peacefully. Despite only having a single year of experience among the collective since their induction, Amanda Pierce had grown accustomed to such cultural clashes. Senator Rel Kwan, please accept my assurances no insult was intended. We greatly respect and appreciate the living works your people craft, she smiled disarmingly. When selecting this gift, we only wish to demonstrate our culture's concept of art for appreciation as well. I see we still have much to learn in expressing our ideas to avoid misunderstanding. The senator harumphed at the attempted apology, but the human sincerity slowly eased tensions. As other delegates stepped up to summarize proper gift exchanges and explain relevant social cues, the gathering dissolved slowly into merely another example of the give and take necessary for relating vastly different peoples. Watching from the upper tiers, Ambassador Zil Kasktime clicked to his aides in curiosity. The humans were working out surprisingly well at their assigned task of easing disputes via dialogue, but something continued to feel subtly incongruent to his projections. There was an almost restless energy to the Terrans when interacting on these matters not fully in line with his initial cultural survey. No matter. The humans had only been present a brief time he would simply request the Cheltik Scientific Directorate observe them more closely. Clearly, even his people's vaunted predictive models could use refinement when assessing new species. Satisfied, he turned his mind to drafting engineering proposals for upcoming trade negotiations, forgetting the incident entirely. Two standard years later. I say the Ferenjage transit proposal remains unacceptable. 
their economic concessions are plainly inadequate for the requested Starlane access through Batrahi territory. The Batrahi trade minister crossed his arms, legs splayed aggressively as his species was wont when facing perceived challenge. The Ferengi trade master in turn waggled his ears in distress, their navigator cast willing to pay almost any premium for additional shortcut routes shaving parsecs off delivery contracts. Like clockwork, the Cheltic arbitration team began collating relative factors to weigh fiscal impact. But before they could finish presenting the traditional cost-benefit analysis, the human senator 1958, Amelia Earhart, unexpectedly strode forward into the confrontation waving her hands for attention. Gentlemen, I understand tensions are running high, but surely a reasonable compromise exists benefiting all. Turning to the Batrahi minister, she lilted what specific assurances or bond do you require accepting passage beyond basic compensation? And you good Ferengis, what peripheral trade rights might offer additional flexibility? The traditional arbiters froze in confusion at the sudden interjection. The Batrahi, equally startled, blinked slowly before replying, well, Senator, preferential fueling rights and guarantee of replacement parts at specific stations would align best with our patrol resources. The Frangage rubbed his palms together greedily. Aha, plus say registering key industrial components for maintenance and repair, yes, would offer you first salvage rights. And astonishingly, within less than three hours, the Terran had hammered out an original expansion of the initial proposal addressing key concerns and incorporating six additional races benefiting from secondary route access. She happily signed the formal agreement handing ceremonial sealant pens to all parties like party favors before stepping aside. In the upper chamber's ambassador Zul Kasktime could only tap his recording pad in bafflement. The unpredictable mammal had single-handedly engineered an economic breakthrough completely outside their species' defined role. Moreover, she acted as though brokering such deals was a perfectly natural use of her time vs. traditional human diplomatic efforts. His fur practically bristled trying to reconcile the data. He turned and scurried off to contact the directorate again. Clearly, the first survey had missed key behavioral insights about these Terrans. Their contributions remained valuable but higher-level analysis was definitely required. The humans simply made no sense. Ten standard years later. The medical research complex on Sialtic 4 was arguably the most prestigious multispecies scientific institute in the known galaxy. Only the greatest geneticists, engineers, and computational minds could earn residency designing and testing cutting-edge cybernetics technology for rehabilitation and augmentation. So when two humans applied from a peripheral university on Mars, the review panel was naturally skeptical. However, the collective had made recent efforts to diversify so the pair were granted brief second-tier postings assisting primary teams on an evaluation basis. No one expected much to result. Which made it all the more shocking when less than two months later the human Dr. Wen and his intern Dashiell demonstrated a working nanite injection matrix that self-assembled into enhanced nerve conduction networks in injured tissue. The woven metallic structures were groundbreakingly biocompatible, bypassing rejection mechanisms and avoiding secondary drawbacks like scarring tissue buildups plaguing traditional cyber implants. And the pair cheerfully noted this was merely an initial concept further cellular regeneration applications were already in exploratory stages. The primary research teams were stunned. When and Dashiell became instant stars, their methods sought out by hundreds of groups and partnerships created overnight to fast-track medical trials. Never before had such an explosion of progress occurred so quickly. And the interns candidly admitted it was essentially a fluke discovery. We were just tinkering, really, but isn't that often how surprises happen beamed Dashiell during their acceptance speech for recognition as full voting institute residents, now leading their own lab complex? Who knows when inspiration may strike? Happy accidents and all that. Her mentor nodded sagely beside her. Curiosity opens many unexpected doors if you step through. We mainly came to learn from all you fine folk, but got excited and went down some odd mental alleys. Guess they didn't lead where anyone anticipated, A. Eh? Laughing merrily, the two humans waved at the cheering audience and stepped off the stage clutching ceremonial medals nearly as large as their torsos. In contrast, Ambassador Zil Kasktime could only lower himself weakly onto a bench amid the standing ovation, dejectedly waving off yet another priority message from the Cheltic Science Institute requesting details on human specialty fields. At this point, there was clearly no answer he or anyone could provide. Ten galactic years since humanity's induction, and they continued exceeding expectations and roles in wild, unpredictable directions no predictive model or past cast experience could account for. They had no specific disciplines everything was open to them.
from economics to engineering to medical arts, and more their contributions were accelerating advancements exponentially across the collective. The ambassador glanced over at a human child interrupting her parents to point excitedly at a passing dessert cart, laughing in simple joy. There truly were no limits with these frustrating, brilliant, infernally playful people. With a sigh, Ambassador Zil Kasktheim rose and headed home to get some rest. His people's analyses would just have to accept that when it came to being audaciously, chaotically themselves, humanity represented an entirely unknown variable. 